afternoon, everyone. Um, this is Tony Van Schoik, and I am so honored uh, to share one of my most favorite people on earth um, that she's going to share with you, you guys, all of the things that she uh, knows to be the best practices on Instagram. I have watched her grow this platform literally doing this amazing job and by following a very specific um, training platform. And honestly, Rachel's so good. She's developing her own course. So we actually are going to be hearing this the very first time she's going to be sharing today. So without further ado, I want to introduce the amazing Rachel Roth. She is, you know, she's one of the top directors in the company. Her and Derek, they are very close friends and they mean the world to us. So I'm super honored to have her here. So Rachel, without any further ado, I want you to share all of your knowledge with everyone um, on how to utilize Instagram, um, you know, not just for business, but just as a, as a platform for everyone here on this call and everyone that's going to hear it in the future to have a voice. So I'm going to turn it over to you, my friend. Oh, thank you so, so much. I appreciate that warm introduction and you know, uh, Tony has been such a loyal friend uh, over the years and has just never wavered in her support, uh, both personally and in business. And so uh, my my husband and I just went through a tough time and uh, lost lost my husband's uh, my husband's mom. And the only reason I tell you that is that Tony, I'm going to try to not get choked up, but Tony, um, literally checked on us constantly, consistently checked on us, checked on us, checked on us and sent us the most beautiful flowers. And it was just, we had so many people do that. Um, but it was just amazing to see the support and love totally not business related, didn't serve her at all. And just the, um, the friendship and the, and so I'm so, so grateful. So listen, this is this is my opportunity to serve her and to give you all, all anything that I have learned along the way um to serve you at the same time. So I'm gonna stop crying. Okay. I'm gonna pull myself together and I'm not gonna cry because I'm actually in a great mood and I'm really happy. So uh I just get a little emotional. I am gonna share my screen and because I because this is a Zoom, I think that you can only see my screen and not see my face when I'm talking. <laughs> and so when I show you my screen, I might pop out of my screen to to like tell you some stories or, you know, whatever, because I want you to see my face uh, for some of the things that I'm going to teach you. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen real quick and, um, and just pull together this, uh, let's get this PowerPoint set up and Okay. You got it. Okay. We got, oh, good. I can't see my face. This is awesome. Okay. Can y'all see me or can you only see the script? The, can you see me? Oh, sweet. Okay. Um, this is great. So now I don't have to go toggle back and forth. Okay. What I am going to, it looks like I'm wearing the same shirt. I'm not actually wearing the same shirt. I just am really into this color right now. Clearly, clearly I am. Um, but what I want to talk to you about, I'm not a social media trainer. And I always say this, like, I am not a social media trainer. I'm not interested in teaching you about algorithms and teaching you about any of that stuff. I'm not. What I am interested in teaching you is how to connect authentically on social media. Because when you crack the code, which is my favorite term, when you crack the code on how to connect authentically on social media, everything else follows. I built my entire social media following, never looking at my, uh, what are those things called? The insights, the like all the all the the data stuff that makes me fall asleep never looked at any of that stuff not interested in that at all um never paid attention to like algorithms and what was popular at the time or anything like that i actually just listened to my gut and i i have kind of this three part framework that i'm going to teach you today um and it really it it did the trick and I didn't even realize it at the time, but in hindsight, I kind of started to figure it out. And so, uh, started going, okay, let's see, there we go. 
So this is going to be about 20 minutes long. And in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to show you the exact things that I started to change at the beginning. Now, listen, we only have 20 minutes. I have a six week course that is going to launch in February. And the six week course is obviously going to be much more in depth. So I'm giving you some big highlights right now, but I grew my social media uh, on Instagram TikTok and Facebook kind of simultaneously to over 335,000 followers. And I'm going to show you exactly what you can do and exactly what I did to start growing this yourself. And guess what? You don't need 335,000 followers on any platform or combined. You don't need that many to be to increase your impact, increase your influence and monetize social media, which is always my goal. I want to teach you how to grow your business, whatever business that is, with this authentic connection, okay? So, do I want to see some hands and some comments. I'm going to open up the chat. Does this sound like you? I want to be able to teach what I know without feeling like an imposter. <laughs> do you ever get on and you're like I don't know. I don't know if I should be telling you this, or I, I don't know if I should be teaching this, right? Okay. Um, can y'all see when I open the chat? Okay. I have a lot of knowledge to share, but I can't get any traction or engagement. Do you feel like you're just kind of constantly posting and it's crickets, right? Maybe you've tried to grow your social media before, but you got overwhelmed and frustrated. Maybe you are tired of spending hours creating reels. Oh my gosh, Have raise your hand if you have spent hours creating reels and you're getting crickets and the other people doing it, you're seeing them go viral around you and you can't figure it out. You want people to understand your intentions and you want to grow your influence without having to hire a social media firm or buy followers. Don't buy followers. It's never a good idea ever. <laughs> I promise. I promise you don't need to. You don't need to. Um, I, so I'm going to tell you a story. Can you see? I asked Derek this morning if he could tell that these were two different people. I was like, can you tell a difference between these two people? And he busted out laughing because I mean, listen, I am the same person, kind of. <laughs> like, I have the same DNA. I have the same parents. I have the same children. I have the same husband. I still live in the same town. This is the same person. This is just like a very different, di different human being because I have evolved. And I'm going to show you and tell you exactly what I did to evolve from this person on social media to this person on social media. Okay. So I printed this out. I was 39 years old and I told a business associate on the phone I'm never going to have a social media presence or get business from social media. That's what I said. I was 39 years old. I thought I was too old. I literally was like, I'm too old for this. Nobody's going to listen to me. I'm not relevant. I was insecure, nervous, thought I was too old and had no relevance on social media. Then my friend, Brittany Rose taught me how to do a reel. We randomly met up in California. Derek and I were there visiting. She taught me how to do a reel. I thought it was kind of fun. So I decided to play around with it. I knew that I would never be one of those influencers who sat on a private jet with a fake Louis Vuitton and a rented puppy, right? Like not my own private jet, but just a rented private jet. Like you all know the, the people, right? Who give this perfect, like polished look. And I'm like, that is not me. I can never, ever be that person. If I was going to do social media, it had to be different. That's when I started to figure it out. So I tapped into the things that I'm going to sh show you today. And don't worry, I'm not going to like keep you hanging. I'm about to jump into it. But I tapped into these things and I started to evolve as a human being. And it's it's like it physically affected me. Like it wasn't like I was just evolving mentally and emotionally. I started to evolve physically, like the confidence that I have, the, you know, all the things like the level of polish that I have, it all started to kind of come together. So I'm not gatekeeping any of the secrets. I'm going to tell you all the things. So what qualifies me to teach you this? I have 335 total followers on my different platforms. I have over 20 million views on my videos. And I initially grew by 6,000% 6, 
within 18 months on all of the on all of the the different g- growth platforms and recently hopped up by another like 20,000 followers on on Instagram. So it's like these things still apply and I have some success stories to show you. So I'm not just like telling you to do things that I don't actually have proof for. So what would it be like if you could grow your impact and influence and learn how to monetize your social media? How would that change your life? And I want you to really think about this. I want you to really think about, because I think that you're here today because this is something that you want to do. And again, this is not about, I'm not going to teach you. I'm not a social media coach. I'm going to teach you how to connect authentically. Okay. And so, but if you were able to connect authentically, and then as a result, you grew your impact, you grew your influence, and you were able to monetize your social media. I know without a shadow of a doubt that every single person on this call, every single person attending this Zoom, and even the, the ones that are watching later, I know without a shadow of a doubt that you have a unique purpose, that you have a message to share. You cannot exist in this world without having an impact. You can't. And so if you want to increase your impact, social media is a great way to do that. And what I know about this group, because I know who leads this group, what I know about this group is that your intentions are so pure and that your impact is for good. And I mean, I'd like to hear an amen. We need some impact for good in this world that's going to hell in a handbasket, as my mom would say. <laughs> hell in a handbasket. So anyway, I want all of you to, to spread your goodness. Okay, this is my three-part framework. And again, there's way more steps than this. And, and I'm going to dive into a lot of this like in future courses and webinars and things like that. But the number one thing is I'm going to talk to you about discovering your true identity. I want you to know who you are serving. And then the third part is serve, serve, serve. Okay. So let's walk through this. Myth number one, you have to copy other influencers. This is one of the biggest myths that is out there. Do you ever, uh, you know how, how Instagram gets to know what you like? I mean, I guess that's called the algorithm, right? So like it gets to know what you like and it, and then it starts feeding you things. Have you ever started scrolling? And I actually saw a reel about it this morning. Have you ever started scrolling and, um, you're like, oh my gosh, every single one of these people is the same. Like snooze fest, every single one of these people is like the same person. They're all buying the same outfits from Target. They're all like talking the same. They all look the same. I'm like, you guys stop copying other influencers. How can you stand out in a sea of vanilla ice cream? How can you be the chocolate scoop if you are trying to conform yourself to all of the other people out there? So stop trying to copy other influencers. I heard this quote. It's one of my favorite quotes of all time. And it's by this woman named Nona Jones. And she says, most people are born an original and die a duplicate. Because they are so concerned about trying to copy everybody else because they think that's what's going to set them apart or that they'll be included, that they'll be accepted, whatever, by just conforming to everybody else. It's the biggest myth that there is. If you are ever going to grow from from an authentic place and truly make an impact in the world, you have to discover your true identity. Um, I have a lot of different steps on how to go through this because it took me a minute. Like that girl that I showed you a few minutes ago, a few minutes ago, like the, the girl that I used to be, I was, I didn't know my identity. I did not know who I was. I did not know. I knew like my belief structure, my belief system, but I didn't know like what made me special, what made me unique, any of that, none of that. So this has been a journey and hopefully I can help you experience it less painfully than I had to experience it. So 
you're once you discover your own true identity, something magical happens. You suddenly stop comparing yourself and feeling less than others. You are fully aware that you possess a unique set of skills and that others possess their own unique set of skills. And the two of you can never be the same. So this magical thing happens. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you are uh, looking at, I was going to say Jan, but Jan's not really a common name anymore, but like you're looking at somebody across Instagram through your screen, or you're looking at somebody you know, in a friend group or at a party or whatever, and you are comparing yourself to her weight, to her hair, to her skin, to her age, to her bank account, you are comparing yourself, right? I mean, that used to be me. Here's what happens when you discover your true identity and you live in your own true authentic self and your authentic identity. You stop comparing yourself to others around you. Because you are so happy for that girl, whoever she is, who is living in her own true identity. And you are just so pumped that she can do that, that she can live in her own, her own true identity. You stop comparing yourself to that person and you are suddenly living in confidence and without like sort of that, um, that self-conscious, insecure place, right? And let me just tell you the freedom that comes from that is truly, truly incredible. And I want that for each and every one of you. Uh, So now this is also very important. Myth number two, you are trying to reach everyone, okay? You want to reach everybody on Instagram, the entire world. You want everybody to like you. It is such a myth and you will never succeed at doing that ever. Um, This is the this quote that it is like one of my favorite quotes of all time. You can't please everybody. You're not an avocado. Not everyone is going to love you. I mean, listen. You are not made to please everyone. And when you stop trying to please everyone, which really pleases no one, we know this, right? When you stop trying to please everyone, girl, the weight that is lifted off your shoulders is just incredible. And in addition to that, not only is the weight lifted off of your shoulders, but you start reaching more deeply. You start reaching the people that you are meant to reach. And so when you're trying to please everybody, nobody really knows what you stand for because you're so blah and you're so like mediocre and lukewarm about everything. Nobody really knows what makes you unique. Nobody really knows what you stand for. Nobody really knows any of that. Right. And so stop trying to please everybody. You don't need to please everybody to have a massively successful social media and business, whatever business is it is that you're pursuing, right? Whether it is money, whether it is whatever, you do not need a massive social media following and trying to please everybody in order to do that. In fact, it's actually a detriment. It really, really is. Um, okay. Myth number three, you need to be a commercial for your products. Oh my Lord. This is my biggest, biggest, like, cringe moment when I see people that I know have so much potential and have so much of a voice and they literally are only becoming a commercial for their own products, right? That's all that they do all the time. So I want you to picture, like, do you remember, some of you might be in the dating scene, but I'm not, but like, I remember going through the dating scene when I was younger, right? Pre-Derek days. And I remember like that first date kind of like intrigue, like, oh, what's this person about? Like, what's this person into? Whatever, right? So I want you to picture that you are on a first date and that the person that you are on a first date with loves spinach. And you're like super pumped because you also love spinach. 
And you're like, this is so awesome. Like we have so much in common. Me and this person could talk about spinach for hours. And in fact, you do. You talk about spinach for hours and you talk about the benefits of spinach and all the things, right? And you're like, "Ah, yes, we are going to go on another date because we have so much in common. So then you go on your second date. And on your second date, this person continues to talk about spinach. And you're like, I feel like we kind of covered that, right? Like, I kind of like, I know how you, I know how you like feel about spinach. And all they do is talk about the recipes for spinach and the different ways that you could prepare spinach and all this stuff. And you're like, okay, yeah, I mean, this is cool. I'm learning some things. So that's cool. I'm I'm learning some things. And then they ask you out on a third date. And you reluctantly accept, but you're like feeling a little bit like, "Mm, I don't know, you know, and you get there and sure enough, what do they want to do? They just want to talk about spinach the whole time again, right? And by this point, you are like crawling out of your skin and you're wanting to go to the bathroom and disappear from the table and call an Uber and get yourself home and never hear from this person again. And not only do you not want to date this person anymore, they've also ruined spinach for you. And you can never eat spinach again and enjoy it because all you can think about is this horrible date, right? And this horrible, like how you got like whatever stuck in these awful conversations. Y'all, this is what the outside world feels like. When they come to a page and you are a commercial for your products, they're like, okay, cool, cool, spinach. Okay, yeah. I mean, I like spinach, but like, there's got to be more to this person than just spinach, right? Like, what gets them out of bed in the morning? What makes them unique? What, like, I don't know. Like, there's a million different things about you other than spinach, other than Monate, fill in the blank, right? Do not fall into the trap of being a commercial for your products. It is the fastest way to lose an audience. It is the fastest way to lose a following. People are like, this person has no substance. And not only do they not have substance, all they care about is making money off of me. That's all they care about. They don't trust you. They don't, they they can't, how could they, right? They know nothing about you. Stop being a commercial for your products. Okay, I want to show you a couple success stories and then I'm going to open this up for some questions. So uh, listen, this is this is uncomfortable for me because I don't want you to feel like I'm tooting my own horn at all. But here's what I want you to know. Um, I asked my friend Ann Fisher, she and I had multiple different trainings and she is now at 168,000 followers on Instagram. She has 50,000 on TikTok. She's at maybe 80 something thousand followers on Facebook. Like she has a massive following now. And I've been watching, I've known Ann for years. I've known her for years. And when we, when we talked, I, I, I reached out to her and said, what the heck, man? Like, this is incredible. And she said, I finally took your advice. I finally did the things that you were telling me to do. And I exploded. So I just want you to see like some of these examples of I'm not just blowing smoke. I'm not just trying to tell you how to do things that I don't actually have <laughs> like firm, you know, stuff to to show you that that it actually works. So she is consistently getting new customers and working on her marketing responses and how to increase her closing ratio. And it's it's pretty incredible to see and to watch from the outside. This is another one of my really good friends, Tammy Fee. Same thing. She, she started kind of studying my like methods, right? My, what I was doing and, and started studying this and, and getting coaching and, and taking advice, being coachable. And she is now, she's actually over 18,000. She's 18 and change and has just skyrocketed. And now not only has grown her money business tremendously, but has partnerships with other non-competing brands. I mean, it's really, really incredible to see. Um, Okay. So this is, listen, we don't have, I don't even know what time it is right now. Yes. Oh, I went a little bit over. I'm sorry. This was a little bit more than 20 minutes, but screenshot this. Um, 
this is a free social media guide um, that, that I put together and it actually has different, different topics than what I talked about today. And what you're also going to do whenever you scan this is you're going to enter in your email address. And so you're going to just get some updates on any new releases of things that, that come out. So like if I'm going to do a free webinar and train more in depth about social media, or if I'm going to, you know, uh, whatever, when my course launches and all that good stuff. And so, um, okay, let's see here. Now I want to open this up. I know this was not a super long discussion. So maybe you have no questions at all, but tell me, I'm going to open this up. You're dating Popeye, Natalie. That's awesome. Ask me, ask me some questions and please feel free to like, I don't know if there's too many people, Tony, that, oh, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, Maybe too many people to open it up uh, to unmuting yourself, but um, I'm going to turn it back over to you if I can figure this out. Make host. Okay. Yeah, I think I just turned it back over to you, Tony. Yep, that that worked. So, um, I mean, if it, we can take a couple of live questions, if anybody wants to unmute, um, if you guys want, uh, go ahead and um, do that, or you can drop it in the chat. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Rachel? You guys, it's simple. It's so super simple. So I have a question. Hi, my name is Tracy. I um so I, I feel like I need to start from ground zero and revamp my social media. So do I should I start with a story? What do I what's the number one thing to start with? You know, helping my audience to know who I am. And then how do I project that in a way where others will want to see it? Am I making sense? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, there's, there's a little bit of a, of a process, um, when you are kind of starting from scratch and, and starting over. And I would say Tracy, which I love your name on here, which is queen Tracy. I love that. Um, I, I think that you discovering your, your true identity and discovering like, what is it that you are wanting what is the message that you want to get across um that's the most important thing and so you know there's there are there's pillars that you can create and everybody's heard about pillars before but really staying within three to five topics and Rory Vaden is is somebody that I love and respect so much. And he he said a quote a while back and he said, you're powerfully positioned to help the person that you once were. And that's a really, really powerful statement because what is it that you have mastered, right? Like what is it that you've kind of overcome in your life? When I look at, the picture of, of the old me that I showed you earlier, I didn't know who I was. I didn't really know how to do my hair and makeup. I didn't really know how to do a lot of things. And as I started to figure those things out, I started to share those things with my audience. And so now really the person that I'm trying to reach is, is who I used to be like five, six, seven years ago. And so I think figuring out what is it that you want to serve your audience with and really starting there and choosing three to five things that you're going to consistently post about all the time so that when people think of like, let's say Ann Fisher, for instance, she has these recipes. So when you, you know, when you think of recipes, kind of good old Southern recipes that are a lot of times like not even good for you. Like, it's not even like she's, she's doing health food. She's doing like her kind of Oklahoma Southern cooking recipes. When people think of that, they associate Anne. 
So what is it that you want to be associated with? I think that's a really, really good place for you to start. And it might take a little bit of, of time and note taking, like you might need to sit for a few minutes and really kind of jot this out and say, what do I want to be known for? Okay. Okay. I struggle because half the trainers say you need to be all business, not the 80, 20 rule. You know, <laughs> I just from personal experience would just disagree. I think that, um, I just, do, I think that showing more parts of yourself, I think that, you know, there's a great book called Stories That Stick yeah. by Kendra Hall. It is a phenomenal book and I recommend it to anybody. She, um, she really goes into great detail of how storytelling and showing different sides of yourself uh, actually sells your product way more effectively. And I, I really, I agree I agree with her more than more than being a commercial. So um, I get scared of having a public profile. So I try to keep my kids and husband off, but people want to see a bit of your life too. Um, okay. So I will tell you, I very, very, very rarely show my children. I also have created a balance where I, people think, that they know everything about me, <laughs> but they don't. They think like I, because I am giving, I'm truly serving and connecting authentically with people. Not a single thing that you see about me in real life. And I mean, a lot of these people know me in real life. Nothing that you see will be different in real life or on social media. Um, but I do not show every facet of my life, my personal life. I hold very, very dear to my heart and I just choose not to show those things. And so if you're worried about having a public profile, um, you can have a private family profile, uh, that you just post those things on and let people see. But because that's something that I'm very, I'm, I'm very cautious of, I don't share a lot of, of hardly any photos of my family. So I, I great, I, I greatly agree with that. I'm all about the arts and being creative. Is that something to build a social media around? Absolutely, Amy. Absolutely. Because whatever it is about you, like I just remember, you know, your MDC video. And I mean, I literally remember exactly where I was sitting. I remember crying. I remember all those things. And so Amy, it's like, you need to share. And I don't know if you are, cause I'm sorry. I don't, I don't see a lot of, a lot of people on social media. I don't actually scroll all that much, but it's like, if you're not sharing those things that you're passionate about, you, you will connect with an entirely new audience. And then what happens is, is that you then gain credibility from those people because you've connected with them. You're not trying to sell them anything. You're just kind of sharing who you are. And then when you do drop in things that you want to sell or promote, they trust you in a completely different way. Um, okay. I'm still questioning if I should include my photography and hairstyling business together. I really feel my, like my brand is looking better and feeling better in front of the camera or in my hair as a stylist. Um, you know, I what I would do for the photography. You know what? I, I really would need to think about that. I need to think about that because I'll tell you, I remember talking to, um, uh, one of the photographers at, at Monade, I can't remember. And I said, Oh my gosh, like you are so missing the boat on not teaching people tutorials on how to take amazing photos because people are coming to Instagram. People are coming to social media to, to learn and to, you know, a lot of times they'll go type in a keyword in Instagram instead of going to Google and things like that, because they want to see like a little video. They want to see different, you know, like different, different people talking about something. That's what I do now. Like, okay, this is such a random example, but I've been hearing a lot about parasites lately <laughs> and I want to do a parasite cleanse for my kids. 
And I know how to do a parasite cleanse for myself, but I didn't know what was appropriate for kids. I went to Google and like tried to look that up, but I couldn't find anything like really that great. I went to Instagram and started following like a bunch of different people who were talking about heavy metal detox and parasite cleansing in your children. And I'm like, heck yes, right? I follow those people. I'm gleaning information from them. And so because I'm learning to trust them and trust their advice, and as they tell me things and I put it to good use, it's going to increase my trust for those people. Well, when I increase my trust for them, when they are ready to sell me something and they pop up on screen with a promotion for their heavy metal detox spray or whatever, you better believe that's who I'm going to buy it from because I trust them, right? And so using something that you're interested in, like like Beth, photography is amazing. What I would do if I were in your shoes is I think I would transition your photography, not just from I, your photos are so beautiful, but you could actually use it as a as an education piece where you say, this is how to have the best hair in a photograph. This is how to take the best photos with your iPhone. This is how like turn it into a teaching opportunity where you're giving people little nuggets of information that has nothing to do with money, that has nothing to do with any business that you're in. You are giving value for free. And that is a very important piece of the puzzle. What else, you guys? I love these questions. So one of, one of the things, um, if you listen to any anybody that has a significant social media platform, it's the value add. What value can you provide them? And, you know, you do a lot of that for free, whatever that case is. And, and I'm just going to use these examples, Rachel, because I, I like, you know, Tracy, I don't know if you're even interested in it, but Tracy, Queen Tracy, like literally she is one of the very few people that I know and they raise cattle. She's got a huge cattle ranch. So, you know, you could talk about, you know, the different things that you're doing, you know, because you live out in the middle of nowhere and you birth these calves and you sell them once a year. I mean, just kind of cool stuff like that. If that's what you're interested in, if you, if you don't like what you're doing, don't promote it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can talk about how the transition, um, but you know, that's just one example. And then I'm going to use Amy as another example, because I've known her forever. But she is a professional scrapbook artist. Like, uh, yeah. Did you know that, Rachel? I did not. See, there you go. <laughs> but it's just like, you know, little nuances that you guys, that that I know what you love doing. And Tracy, again, Tracy loves being a grandma. She could talk about being, you know, she's got a, she's, you know, she's got her, her little buddy that she's always showcasing. And I mean, literally, you could talk about grandma's crushing it in MLM. I mean, just stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Natalie. Well, as Tony was saying that, because, you know, I, it's hard to take the corporate hat off and jump into all this. So parts will come back and just bear with me. But if you're not showing those other elements of yourself, then how is somebody going to see themselves in you? Mm -hmm. If you're only back to what Rachel said about just being a commercial about Monate, you are so much more than Monate. And you have to show other people that you can be a cattle rancher and do this. You can be a photographer and do this. You can be a hairstylist and do this. So you have a responsibility to show just how, I don't say how wide you are, because none of us want to be known to be wide, but how the, the depth to you, the breadth of experience and um, experiences that you can share with other people. That's all I'm going to say. Absolutely. So do you feel like we should concentrate our efforts more on IG than Facebook? Uh, you need to focus your efforts on whichever platform you have the most success on. And so whichever one you enjoy the most, whichever one you find succeeding the most, girl, do it. Jump in. And what I would say is I, I have found that focusing on one platform uh, and really kind of sticking with that one has been the most successful for me versus splitting, splitting up my time and effort. So I would choose your favorite and focus on that one. And it doesn't mean that you can't focus on the other ones later, but it's kind of like Steve Martin, when he said, you know, he gets a question, how do you become a millionaire? And he said, well, the first thing you do is you get a million dollars. Right. And so it's like, you have to get, you have to like focus on one first 
and get success there. And the, then you can translate it to others. And if you want, my instinct is that you probably won't even need to, because you'll be having so much success on the one that, that you have. I'm having a terrible time deciding what parts of me to share. My story is all over the place. I have really bad ADHD and that's with medication. I know that's a huge topic, but it's also an issue with organization and just getting started. I second guess myself. I have really strong beliefs and I'm not sure how others would take me. I do not BS and I'm heavy tongued about it. Okay. You are going to find your people. You are going to find your people. So with the lack of organization and with your ADHD, what my suggestion would be is choose three or four topics. And this is real easy. This is how you weed out any other, any, anything else. And you say, these are the only topics that I am going to post about. And so, you know, for me, one of my pillars is beauty and fashion. And I love that. I love beauty and fashion and posting about those things. And so I know I also love to post like healthy recipes and I love to post like motivational stuff. So it's like, I know that if something doesn't pass the sniff test and if it like is just completely like incongruent with the other stuff that I've posted, it's probably maybe not a good, a good thing to post, you know, and I'm probably not going to get a ton of traction on it because that's not why the people that follow me follow me. They, they follow me because maybe they want a hair tutorial or a makeup tutorial or something like that. And so, uh, that's how I, that's my, that's my suggestion for that. The bio has hardly any space. It's hard to explain a bit about yourself. So they know a bit about you and why they might see your page. Um, I want to tell you, I, I never hardly ever, ever, ever even look at a bio. Um, the things that get popped up, like on the discovery page on Instagram and things like that, you can go look at, uh, Shalene Johnson and her, her son, Brock Johnson. Brock did some, did a little talk about a bio. Um, you can go look at mine. Mine is probably going to be changing soon because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just evolving as a human. So I've been thinking that I need to probably update mine. Don't get caught up on the bio. Just put a few things like find, find a, a few pages that you like, read the bio, see what theirs says and copy it. But with your own, with your own words and your own spin and what it is that you focus on and you're good. When I share the flash sales and incentives, uh, I don't feel like it reaches anybody. What should I do? It's because you haven't built trust. You haven't built trust. And the reason that you're not getting traction on those is because people are, um, they are, listen, this is not who you are. And this is not what I think you are. They see a random post about a sale, like a, like a billboard or a used car salesman. They're like, okay, I have no emotion because I've trained myself to not have emotion because I'm not getting sucked into that because I know that they're just trying to tell me, sell me something, right? You have not built a personal relationship and a personal connection in order to earn the right to ask for us, ask for the sale. So. Hey, Rachel, I just on Insta bio. We talked, we uh, talked about that. Let's see if there's any, do you add tabs so people can go to a website? Um, yeah, you can do, uh, you can, I, I, you know, you can have a highlight bubble that, that uh, if you're going to talk about flash sales in your stories, people can go to that. But, um, Again, once you start building trust, then if you go in your stories and talk about a flash sale and you've built trust because you've given free value away, um, and then people are going to buy it because they already trust you. You've already built that trust. So you don't, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think you need to even worry about that at this juncture. I would worry about building trust first and foremost. Um, Rachel, I do want to piggyback on something. Um, I was at a mastermind uh, a couple months ago and got to meet an incredible guy. His name is Jonathan George. And he is, he actually won. I don't know if you guys remember, uh, Dan, no, the the one with Ed McMahon. And he won that like for sing very cool, nice guy. Anyways, long story short, um, he, he, you know, coaches and, and does voice work and stuff for some pretty influential people. The one thing that stuck with me is he told me, he said, when you go to a bio, he goes, have the basics. So like 
what your background is like. If you're a, a stay-at-home mom, if you are an uh, entrepreneur, or if you're an author, something that will just capture, but also gives you um, credibility. That's the word I'm looking for. Just and you guys, you can do anything, anything at all, and have credibility. Hell, you could be a professional quilt maker, and you you put it in there, right? Because that it it, it people are like professional quilt maker. Huh? Yes. And this is a real thing, guys. So exactly. anyways, I just wanted to add that. Oh, Tony, thank you so much for adding that because that is such a great point. It's like every single person has such a unique skill set. And what makes you an expert on your life is that you're the one that's lived it. Nobody else has ever lived it. Nobody else has, has gone through your experiences. You are an expert at what it is that you're going to talk about. And so I just, it, so many people are hesitant to, to put themselves out there um, and they don't think they have this imposter syndrome or whatever. And it just doesn't need to happen. Once you get the confidence and um, personal interest looking, that's exactly right. You are going to find your people. Rachel, so much great information that you shared uh, and make sure you're following Rachel on Instagram and follow her lead guys, because you know what? She's done this organically from the beginning. And now look at her, look at how she has grown. And um, I know you guys, if you go to our training platform on YouTube, she also did a friggin' amazing training on, on VIP acquisition as well, which kind of led her into where she is right now talking to you guys about all of this from, you know, the best practices that she has learned on her own. So um, I just want to thank you so much, my friend. Uh, much love to you and Derek. Um, and especially, you know, over this challenging time that you guys have had, we love you so, so much. I know you do. And we can feel that. And I appreciate it so much. Somebody just asked, do you recommend having one social media that's dedicated to your money business? No, please don't do that. It completely takes away the personal aspect. It becomes just about business and you become a Monique commercial. So I would say a hard no. Thank you all so much. You had such amazing questions and I just loved, loved, loved every bit of this. So thank you all so much. It was so good to see you.